There are so many layers to this Mariners and Twins trade. I almost don't even know where to start from who won the trade. Was there an overpay? You've got the bigger picture that is also impacted. Everything we've been hearing about the Mariners possibly trading one of their star pitchers to bring in a bat. I think that might be secured here with Polanco and talking about what the Mariners needed. We were talking about it on our stream last night about how the Mariners only had two bats in that lineup that had the potential to hit for 30 or more home runs. Well, Polanco's done that. So now you got a third bat. So we're going to dive into this video. I would love for your thoughts down below. We're going to talk about all these different layers, why I like this trade for both sides, and I'll let you know by the end who I think is the actual winner here. Maybe it's the winner because they got the most pieces. Maybe it's the winner because they got and addressed their biggest need. So we're going to dive into this thing. Again, comment down below. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoy your time here. And subscribe if you're new. So the trade all together. Polanco goes to the Mariners. The Twins get Gabriel Gonzalez, the number five prospect from the Mariners organization. They also get Darren Bowen, the number 25 prospect from the organization. Justin Topa, who had been pitching out of the pen last year for Seattle very well, I might add. And Anthony Desclafani, who they had just signed this offseason, and now they spin him in this trade. That is a nice addition for this Twins uh, bullpen. And Cash, as well, going to Minnesota. So I like, I like this trade for both sides. You know who doesn't like this trade? Baseball trade values doesn't like this trade. An $11 million value for Gonzalez, seven for Topa, half a million for Bowen, negative a million for Descalfani, and nine and a half for Polanco, giving us a $17.3 million value going to Minnesota and nine and a half going to the Mariners. Fascinating. You wonder, I, I feel like Topa may be, may be overvalued here, but there, here's the question. Is it an overpay? For Jorge Polanco. Baseball trade value says it is. Maybe Topa's overvalued. He was good out of the pen last year, though. And again, Gabriel Gonzalez, we got a top five prospect here in the Mariners organization, now shifting over to the Twins organization. Bowen, a top 25 prospect in the organization. Desclafani's a, a decent pitcher. He's going to, I think, do some good things. So that's a question. Comment down below. Do you think... Do you think Seattle overpaid? In my mind, I I, I feel like Gonzalez and Desclafani should have been enough. But again, maybe Topa's overvalued here. Bowen, I don't know how you could be overvalued at half a million dollars. But comment below. Let me know what you think. Let's take a look at this for the Minnesota Twins. Now, Anthony Desclafani is right here. Uh, Fangraphs has inserted him into the bullpen. I think he will be a starter. I think you add him to the bottom, the back of this rotation, and right there, Varland. Varland goes to the bullpen. That feels like the logical move. Varland looks good out of the pen. Let's put him back over there. Let's get Del Scafani in the rotation. And in doing this trade, the Minnesota Twins get another reliable starter in Del Scafani. And they have two pieces added to the bullpen because up, up to this point, Varland was penciled in as a starter. Now you move him back to the pen. You have Justin Topas in the pen. All of a sudden, the bullpen has been bolstered and the rotation has been improved by doing this trade. So I like it. The bullpen, again, we're adding through this trade, we're able to add two pieces to the Twins bullpen. Now the bigger picture that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, what are we talking about here? We knew Seattle wanted to bring in a bat. They were not going to be able to spend in the free agent market to upgrade that lineup. They were going to have to execute a trade. And rumors were all over that it could be Kirby, it could be Gilbert, it could even maybe be Castillo. Now, we don't have to, Seattle fans, you don't have to worry about that anymore. We'll talk about that more in a second. But most most, most recently... We had been hearing rumors about Blake Snell and the Seattle Mariners. And I think this puts an end to that. Blake Snell would have been the piece you would have gone to get if you had to trade Kirby or Gilbert 
or Castillo, then you would go get Blake Snell. That is no longer necessary because they got their bat without having to trade one of those starters. So Blake Snell in Seattle, that's, I think, 99.9% not going to happen now. And the way this lineup now starts to come together, adding Polanco. Again, in our live stream on Sunday night, we talked about how the Seattle Mariners still needed more. The trade for Dylan Cease didn't make sense. They needed the bat. You can't trade Miller for another pitcher. If you trade Miller, you trade Miller for a bat. Well, they get the bat without having to trade Miller. Polanco comes in to play second base. Now, look, Polanco, he's defensively, he's not great. All right, so just, just get ready for that. Seattle, you're, you're not getting a good a, a good glove uh, for second base of Polanco. But that's the, the, the point here isn't for, for the defense. The point here is to improve the lineup, and that's what it does. With Polanco... Along with Rodriguez and Raleigh, you got guys that can pop 30 home runs. And if Garver can stay healthy and Garver can hit like we saw last year with the Rangers, I think Garver could push for 30. So you have increased the slug with this lineup by going out and getting Polanco. And again, they did it without having to trade any of their major pitchers, the guys that currently slot in to that starting rotation, which is important. As Mariners fans, I don't think any of you wanted to live in a world where Gilbert or Kirby had to be traded because you wouldn't sign a free agent. Gilbert and Kirby, you've got four years of control for each of them. I think, no, wait, I think it's three for Gilbert and four for Kirby or five for Kirby. It's crazy. These guys that are pitching at a level that you should be paying $20 million a year for that you're getting for the on the cheap. You can't deal that away. And Luis Castillo is an arm and a a competitor that doesn't come around that often. So you don't want to trade him either. You feel like you got something good with Miller. You don't want to deal him. So you've got a rotation now that stays intact. One thing that this trade does still allow for, as crazy and unlikely as it may seem, it does leave the door open for a Dylan C straight, as unlikely as it may seem. That was rumored that we got that yesterday from Bob Nightingale's article in USA Today that the Seattle Mariners are talking with the White Sox about Dylan Cease. It does leave the door open for that because those pieces in that starting rotation that may be utilized in a White Sox trade are still there and could still be utilized in a trade with the Chicago White Sox. But again, Chris Getz is asking for the sun and the moon. You're going to have to give up Miller, uh, one of your top five remaining prospects, more prospects on top of that. You don't want to do it. I know you don't want to do it, Seattle Mariners fans. It's too much. That's what every franchise has said to Chris Getz, is that it's too much. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Who won the trade? Was there an overpay? Is Seattle done now? I would argue they're done. When it comes to adding bats, I would argue now you're in a spot where you can start to put together, this is our squad, this is our club, let's get ready. We report to spring training in a couple weeks. These are our guys. And Twins fans, I think you got to feel good about this as well. Both sides feel good about This is a win-win trade. No doubt about it. Win-win trade. Seattle had to get the bat. They got it. The Twins needed to grab pitching. Again, they get it. So both sides are looking good here. Who's the overall winner, though? Again, in a win-win trade, I'm still going to give out the overall winner. I'll put it this way. I like this trade for Seattle. I love it for Minnesota. So for that, I'm going to give the Twins the edge here because you get a prospect to develop. You get Descalfani. You add him to that rotation. You get to move Varlin to the pen. You get to have your piece with Topa in the bullpen. So you're getting two bullpen pieces. You're solidifying the rotation. So I, for that reason, and the prospect and some cash, For that reason, I lean a little bit more to the Twins as the overall winner of this trade. Comment below. Let me know who you think won the trade. That's going to do it for this one, everybody. Ball Cap Nation, I salute you. Thank you guys for coming in and watching the video. Make sure to hit that like on the way out. Subscribe if you're new. Turn those notifications on and comment down below with your thoughts on this deal. That's it for this one, everybody. Remember, if it's low, let it go. And if it's high, let it fly.